we receive a lot of questions from people asking about their irrigation controller, not sure about a lot of things. We're going to ask Willie West to help us answer some of those questions. One of these questions, Willie, is when do I change my battery? How do I know I, that battery needs changing? Good question, Curtis. Um, a lot of the new controllers come with what's called a battery backup system. Um, and this particular one, it's located back here. And there's your battery. Some controllers have a rechargeable battery in them, um, and those are usually good for three to four years. You never really have to worry about them. The rest of them have these typical alkaline nine volt batteries. These you should change um, when you change your smoke detector batteries. Uh, about every six months. The purpose of these, they will not run your controller if the power is off. They won't activate the system, but what they do do is they keep the memory. So you don't have to go back in and reprogram your controller every time we have a power outage. A lot of people have trouble programming their irrigation controller. Can you show us the steps in programming the controller? Sure. Um, this particular brand of controller is really quite simple to program. Um, not only do you have the normal owner's manual, but on this particular model, they give you a quick cheat sheet that's located on the front side of your um, panel door. Set this one, you put it over in the set program. The numbers on this side are your different zones, your different valves. These are your start times, the days of the week you want it to water. And this particular program, the controller has an A, B, and C program. So we have three different programs that we can utilize each one with three different start times. So we have lots of options with this controller. Um, to go through, you put it in the set program. Let's say we're gonna go to station number one. And from our zone chart, which is located back here, we know that's a rotary zone. And it's gonna run for about 10 minutes. We come over here and we find out it's gonna come on twice a day at 11 o'clock at night and at nine o'clock in the morning. Reading that right there. Right. And I believe this particular one was on for five days a week. Yes, it was. Um, you go through and it just tells you whether it's on or whether it's off. Okay? That's all there is to it, using the plus minus buttons. If you wanted to add a few more minutes, you add a couple more minutes. Willie, oftentimes we see that it's rained or it's still raining and the sprinklers are running. What do we do if we're having a rainy day? And it's raining a lot, so there's enough moisture that we don't need to irrigate. What do we do? Shutting the controller off works great for a homeowner, but for commercial properties, city properties, uh, school properties, that's not really a good option. Um, if you look at it from my point of view, when it's raining, do I send somebody out in their truck to drive around to the 60 or 80 controllers that we manage, have them shut those controllers off, and then get back in their truck two days later and go back around and turn them all back on again? Same thing applies for the cities. Um, they have the same situation. They have a large amount of controllers all over the place. So yeah, it does water when, the ir when it is raining, but in their defense, it's just a pure issue of manpower. Now, cities and school systems are trying new software where they can, from a remote location with their computers, shut down systems when it's raining with a push of a button. It's a great idea, and it's extremely expensive. That's why not a lot of places can do it. The city of Albuquerque and EPS are both working on that and they are putting more and more systems online that way so they can help save water when it's raining. Right now though, for commercial, it's not practical. We encourage people to irrigate early in the morning, sometimes before they're even up. If they've got an automatic timer to turn it on and turn it off, they don't have to worry about it so much. However, there's a reason to do it manually. People need to know how to turn it on manually and see what to look for. Can you show us some of these things? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, as a matter of fact, in Albuquerque, Curtis, we're not even allowed to water between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. during the day. So a lot of times people do program their controllers come on at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. That way they run before you get up and take a shower. Um, but it's real important. On the commercial properties, um, those irrigation systems are checked pretty much weekly. Um, Residentials, I'd say a minimum of every two to three weeks, you should really go out and turn on your system. Now, somebody's going to say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to get up at 10 o'clock before 10 on Saturday to check my system. If you're checking your system under Albuquerque's law, that is allowed, um, as long as you are there servicing your system. In this particular controller, it's real simple to do. Um, all you have to do is go over to this button that says semi-auto, push on, and the system will go through that cycle, and you can check your entire system. There's other controllers out on the market that are available for homeowners that have what's called a two-minute test where you turn the dial and push another button and now each zone will run for two minutes and that's a good, good way to do it as well. And what do we look for when we've done this? Well, let's, system's on now. Let's go ahead and take a look outside and see what we got. Mm -hmm. 
Uncle Willie, that's easy to see. I can see we've got a geyser here. That's a good reason to turn it on. Yeah, it sure is, Curtis. Uh, that's putting out probably in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 gallons a minute that's just one down the street. And none of the rest of the sprinklers are working? No, with that geyser um, and the system that we've installed here, none of the other heads will pop up. So pretty soon you start getting stress in the system, in this turf area. And the area just below that geyser would be nice and green. Or fungus. Or fungus. Well, let's fix it. Okay. Well, now you've replaced it. There's no geyser. We can see the other head. The wind's kind of blowing us a little bit today. That's why we're getting some of this overspray. But on a calmer day, I think we'd be in good shape. Good.